Hi everybody, in this video we are going to go over the second section in chapter 1, lines and graphs, or let me say graphs and lines. In this section we are going to talk about linear equations in two variables, namely x and y, the slope of a line, and two special representations for linear equations, namely the slope-intercept form, which is the most intuitive, and the point slope form and in a separate video we will discuss applications okay so let's get started and here is our first definition a linear equation in two variables and as we can see a linear equation in two variables is an equation that can be written in what we call standard form which is some number a times the first variable x plus some other number b times the second variable y is going to be equal to some third number c. So yes, a, b, and c are numbers or constants, x and y are variables. The only constraint that we have is that both x, I'm sorry, both a and b cannot be equal to zero because if they are, then c has to be equal to zero and we're going to have zero is equal to zero, which is not particularly interesting. And you can't do too much math for business and economics with the statement zero equals to zero, except to verify that, well, you know, zero is zero. Okay, moving on. Okay, so what are the solutions to an equation in two variables? Well, essentially, a solution to an equation in two variables is going to be an ordered pair. And if you recall, 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 it, recall what an ordered pair is, an ordered pair is essentially two numbers surrounded by parentheses where the first number is the x-coordinate and the second number is the y-coordinate or the x-value and the y-value. And an ordered pair of numbers is a solution to an equation two variables if that ordered pair actually satisfies the equation. In other words, if these two numbers would make the equation true. And this brings us to our first theorem for this section. And that is the graph of a linear equation in two variables. And what does this theorem state? Well, it says that the graph of any equation of the form ax plus by equals a c is going to be a straight line. Furthermore, any straight line on a Cartesian coordinate system is a graph of an equation of this particular form. So if you have a form, if you have an equation of this form, it's a straight line. If you have a straight line, there is an equation that's going to look like this. That's pretty much what it says. So linear equations, straight lines. Okay, how do we graph a linear equation? Well, how do you graph a line or how do you make a line? You pick two points and you connect the dots. Same thing here. Since two points are necessary to draw a line, we're going to find two points. The first point is going to be a point to satisfy this equation. We're going to call it P for lack of something else. Then we're going to find another point, another ordered pair, a different ordered pair that satisfies the equation. We're going to call that Q. We're going to plot those two points on the Cartesian plane, and then we are going to connect the dots. So the question here is, which two points do, are, are the best to use? Well, it turns out that as long as C is not equal to zero, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the, probably the best two points to get. Why? Because they are the easiest to compute. The only exception is that when c is equal to zero, because if you, um, it, when, when, when c is equal to zero, then it turns out that the graph is going to go through the origin. So if you actually set x, x equal to zero to find y, you'd find that y is equal to zero. And if you set y equal to zero to find x, you would find that um, x is equal to zero. So it turns out that since it crosses the origin, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the exact same point. Okay, well, for the case where it doesn't cross the origin, how can we do this? Or how can we find the x-intercept? Remember, we're looking for the point, that value where the line crosses the x-axis. And the line crosses the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So we will set y equal to 0. We will solve for x. We will call that point x-int, or x-intercept. Okay, then the x-intercept is that point. Now, this is a little different than what you may have learned in 114, where we called the x-intercept the ordered pair x int 0. In this particular case, we are not looking at the ordered pair. We are going to call the x-intercept this particular value right here. Similarly, to find the y-intercept, i.e. the point where this crosses the y-axis, 
When does this occur? This occurs when x is equal to 0. 0, no, 1, 0, negative 1. So we're going to set x equal to 0. We're going to solve for y. We're going to call that solution y int, and that will be the y-intercept. So in the past, we would call the, point, the order pair 0, y int, the y-intercept. Well, in this particular case, we're just going to call this the y-intercept. And this brings us to our very first problem. And that is to graph 4x minus 3y equals 12. Now, since this is not equal to 0, we can just go ahead and uh, find the intercepts. And we can find the x-intercept by letting y equal to 0. And if we do, we will have that 4x equals 12 plus 3 times 0 is 0. We can divide both sides by 4. And we will have that x int is equal to 3, which would be a point right there. So that's x-intercept. OK, for the y-intercept, we said x equal to 0. And if x is equal to 0, this goes away. This goes away. And we would have negative 3y is equal to 12. We would use the multiplicative property of equality, divide everything by negative 3. And we will have that y int is equal to negative 4. OK, and that would be a point 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. And then you can use your straight edge. Fortunately, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have one. And you can basically draw a straight line that goes through those dots. All right. Now, unfortunately, you will not be doing this freehand in MML. You are going to actually have to use their graphing tool in MML to actually make this happen. So let's see how that's going to work. OK, so here is MML. And in your homework, you'll have to graph an equation. In this example, we, uh, they, if, if you had this version of the homework, you would have to graph the uh, equation 9x plus 2y is equal to 18. But we're not going to do that. We are going to graph 4x minus 3y is equal to 12. And we have the x-intercept, and we have the y-intercept. And the question is, how do we do this in MML? The first thing that you're probably going to do is to make the graph as big as you can. And you can actually grab it here to make this window bigger. And then what you could do is you could click this and not to enlarge your graph. But if you did, that's as big as the graph gets. And you really can't work with that. So what I would recommend is that, one, you click on the graph. okay, And that brings up these collection tools. Then you click on the Zoom In button right here. And you can make this as large as you want. Look how big you can make that sucker. And now, to actually graph the line, you're going to want to come down here and select one of these tools. And the tool that you're going to want to select is this one right here. It's called the Line Tool. And what you need to do is plot two points, and then it will draw the line for you. And as you mentioned before, the x-intercept is 3. So we can come over here on the x-axis, go to 3, 1, 2, 3, and basically click on that. Okay, there's our dot. Then over here, we know that the y-intercept is negative 4. So we can, go, we can go find negative 4 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there it is. And we'll draw the line for you. You can click Check Answer. I can't really do that because it's for the equation for that line. But you can click Check Answer, and, the, and away you go. Okay, another thing that you're going to be asked to do is to use a graphing calculator to graph the equation. OK, well, notice here. And so the first thing that you want to do to do that first is to solve for y. OK, so let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and do that. And I know the answer is here, but we can still walk through it. So the very first thing that we want to do is basically move all the non y terms to the other side. And the only non y term we have here is 4x. So let's subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. And if we do the subtraction, these cancel, we will have negative 3y is equal to negative 4x plus 12. Now we can divide all both sides by negative 3 to get rid of the coefficient. And that will these will cancel. We will have y is equal to 4 over negative 4 over 3, which is just 4 thirds x. Plus the negatives will cancel. And then 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. So we'll have 4 thirds x minus negative 4. All right, 4 thirds x minus 4. OK, so how do we do this with a TI-84 um, TI series calculator? Well, here is my emulator for the calculator. The first thing you're going to, do, going to want to do is come over to this y equal thing. 
and your calculator will produce all these things right here. And then under Y1, all you're going to want to do is basically put in this equation. So it's going to be 4 divided by 3 times, and we can click this button for X, okay? And then it's going to be minus 4, okay? And then we can just go ahead and click Enter. And then we have it programmed in. Now, what you might want to do is come over to window. Basically, you want to make sure that X max, X min is minus 10 and X max is 10. And the same thing with Y win and Y max and that the scales are the same and they are. All right. And if that's the case, you can come over here to click graph. And there's your equation. And notice that the X intercept is three, the Y intercept is negative four, which is exactly what we expected. Okay, moving on. Next subject we want to talk about is the slope of the line. Now recall that the slope is basically nothing more than the change in the y value of your, of your line with respect to the change in the x value. And it provides you information, I should have had information, not just inform, about the steepness of the line. Specifically, the larger the absolute value of the slope, the steeper the line. The smaller the absolute value of the slope, the fatter the line. The flatter the line, not fatter the line, but the flatter the line. And the other thing that we want to mention is that the change of the x value is tends to be known as the run, and the change in the y value tends to be known as the as the rise. Not the y's, but the rise. And brings us to definition number two. Suppose you have a line that passes through different points, through two different points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Then the slope is given by the difference between the y values, y2 minus y1, divided by the difference between the x values, x2 minus x1. We can also call that, you can call y2 minus y1 the vertical change, and x2 minus x1 the horizontal change. Or we can call this the rise, because there's a difference in the y values, divided by the run, which is the difference in the x values. Okay, let's make a few more comments about the slope. Remember I said that if a... Um, so if, if the, the slope is positive, then it looks like an uphill graph. So going from left to right, it looks like you're climbing a hill. This, has, th this actually has a smaller slope because it is flatter, and this one has a larger slope because it is cheaper. Similarly, a negative slope looks like you're going downhill from left to right. Start here at the left, and you go down as you go right. And once again, the absolute value of the slope determines the steepness. Since the absolute value of this slope is higher, it is steeper, and the absolute value of this slope is smaller, it is flatter. And then finally, if the absolute value of the slope is zero, we have a flat graph. Similarly, if the absolute value of the slope happens to be uh, undefined, then you actually happen to have a vertical graph. And this brings us to our next example. There's four parts. And the question here is, determine whether the slope of this graph is positive, negative, zero, or undefined. And what do you guys think? Hopefully you guys think it's negative. How about this one? This one, well, it is flat, so this one has a slope of zero. And then for this one, it is completely vertical, so this one is undefined. And finally, this one, you are going uphill. So that would be a positive slope. Okay, now, in this example, we want to write an equation for the horizontal and vert um, for the horizontal and vertical lines that pass through this particular point. Now notice that in a vertical line, the x value always stays the same regardless of y. So in this one, we have x is equal to negative 1, 2, 3, 3.5 for lack of a better term. So it turns out that for the line to be vertical, the line, the, the line is going to be the line is always going to have the exact same x value, and that x value will always be negative eight. So with that in mind, we can rewrite the um, the equation for the vertical line as x equals negative eight. Similarly, for the uh, vertical for the horizontal line, for any value of x, y is always going to be equal to negative 2. It never, never changes. As a consequence, the vertical line that passes through negative 8, 2 is going to be y, and that's going to be equal to negative, no, not negative 2, but y will be equal to 2. All right, and what will those things look like? 
Well, this right here would be, for lack of my, if you spare my drawing skills, will be, okay, let's make negative eight there. X equals negative eight. And then this line here, this horizontal line would be y equals two. But nonetheless, remember it, but, but, but nonetheless, since the vertical line um, is always fixed at x, it will always be, uh, it will be always fixed at negative, at the, at the x coordinate, it will be x equals negative eight. And since the horizontal line is always fixed at the y coordinate, it will be y is equal to two. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find the slope for these two particular points. So here we can call this x1, y1, and this one will be x2, y2. All right, so the equation for the slope is going to be m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here we will have negative 2 minus 5, y2 minus y1, divided by x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is negative 1. All right, well, negative 2 minus 5 is just negative 7. Negative 1 minus 1 is like negative, this becomes a, this right here becomes a plus 1. So this is basically minus 1 plus 1, which is going to be, and this is going to be equal, the denominator will be equal to 0, so we're going to have negative 7 divided by 0, and this is undefined. So in this particular case, since we're dividing by 0, our slope is undefined. If it's undefined, that means the line must be vertical. And if the line is vertical, it's going to pass through x is equal. It's going to be equal to it's going to be equal to negative one for all values of y. Okay, so what about the next one? Okay, well using once again we'll call this x1, y1, and one, and this one x2, y2. Okay, then we're going to have that the slope is equal to one minus negative two divided by two minus negative one. Okay, well one minus a negative two is just like one plus two, and then two minus a negative one is just like two plus one. This is going to be equal to three divided by three, which is equal to one. So in this case, we have a slope of one. Okay, equations of lines. We have two special forms for equations of y of of, um, of lines. This one right here is the slope-intercept form. Okay, where the equation where we have the equation y is equal to mx plus b, and once again m is the slope of the line and zero b. I should have probably called this zero comma y int is the y-intercept. So I could also write this as m x plus y int and this is probably the most useful representation for the line y because well, because m tells you how steep it is and then this number right here tells you where on the where it actually crosses the y-axis okay so this brings us to our next question our next example which is something that you'll have to do in your homework find the slope and y-intercept namely y int not the ordered pair of this equation. Okay, well, this right here, that's m. That's the slope. So m or the slope is 3 fourths. This number here, negative 3, that's the y-intercept. So y int is equal to negative 3. Don't you wish all our problems were this straightforward? Okay, here's the next one. Here we want to write an equation with a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of negative 1. And then we don't know we want to graph that equation. Okay, well, one of the things I should have mentioned is that we want to write this in, in slope-intercept form, which is y is equal to, or if they don't specify the form, you can write it in any form you want. So in this case, the easiest form would be y is equal to mx plus, plus b, or y int. All right, so m is 1 half, b, which is y, the y-intercept, is equal to negative 1, so then y is going to be equal to 1 half x minus 1. 
Okay, if you were going to plot that on standard graph paper, how would you do that? Well, notice here, here, here is negative 1. This is the y-intercept. Now we have a slope of 1 half, which means, that the, which means that the rise is equal to 1 and the run is equal to 2. So every time you run two spaces, 1, 2, you rise one space, 1. Those are our two points. And then you can go ahead and pull out the graph. Okay, what if you had to do this here? Okay, we already know that y int is equal to negative 1, and the slope is equal to 1 half. All right, let's come back over to the line tool. And first, let me actually clear this one. You would click on your line tool right there. We know that the y-intercept is, let me click on that again. We know that the y-intercept is negative 1, so we can click on negative 1 on the y-axis. Then once again, we know our slope is 1 half. The rise is 1, and the run is 2. So we can make a rise of 1, and then go over 2. 1, 2, and there's our second point. And that's how we would actually plot that on MML. Okay, next you're going to be asked to, given a graph, find the equation for that particular line. Okay, and we can actually do that here. Here we have a graph of a line. Uh, we need to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the slope, and then write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. All right, so the x-intercept. The x-intercept is that value of x where it crosses the x-axis, i.e. that point right here. That would be 1, 2. So the x-intercept is 2. The y-intercept. Well, okay, well, that's the point where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, well, here's the y-axis, 1, 2, 3. The y-intercept happens to be 3. Okay, the slope is going to be equal to the rise over the run. All right, we'll take a look over here. If we start here, to get to the next point that crosses the grid line, which is right here, we need to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. So that is a rise of negative 3. And then the run, so we, had when we went 1, 2, 3, and then the run to get to here, we need to go positive 2 in the x direction. We need to run two spaces, 1, 2. All right, so there you go. That's the slope, negative 3 halves. Okay, so we got the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the slope. And since we have the y-intercept and the slope, we can actually write this equation in slope-intercept form. It's going to be y is equal to the slope, which is negative 3 halves, times x plus the y-intercept, which is 3. And there you go. That's how you do that particular problem. Okay, next here we want to find the slope and graph this particular equation. How can we do that? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can convert this into slope-intercept form. And how do we do that? Well, basically we do that by solving for y. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, we need to get all the y terms on one side and all the non-y terms on the other side. So let's actually subtract 3x from both sides. And if we do, these will cancel. We will have negative 9y is equal to negative 3x minus 27. Then I want to divide both sides by negative 9. Negative 9 here, negative 9 here, and then these will cancel. We will have y. Negative 3 divided by negative 9 is positive 1 third. And then over here, negative 27 divided by negative 9 is positive 3. Okay? So here is the equation in slope-intercept form. This is the slope. This is the y-intercept. So the slope is going to be equal to 1 third. Okay? And then the y-intercept is going to be equal to 3. And how would this look like when you, gra when you, when you graph it? Well, let's bring our graphing tool back over. Let's go ahead and clear. Let's click on our line tool. And our y-intercept will be 3. Here is 3 right there. Now, our slope is 1 thirds. For every rise of 1, 
we do a run of three. One, whoop, one, two, three. And that would be what, and that is what our line would look like. Okay, the next definition is the famous point slope form. Here we have the equation of the line with slope m that passes through a particular point, x1, y1. Then the equation can be written as y minus y1, that point, is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. And again, we call this the point slope form for the equation. Great. How can we use it? Okay, well, let's find an equation that has, for a line that has slope 3 halves, I'm sorry, 2 thirds, and passes through the point 6, negative 2. Well, to do this, we are going to use the um, point slope form. y minus y1 is equal to 2 thirds x minus x1. All right, this is x1. This is y1. So we can just do y minus negative 2. It's going to be equal to 2 thirds x minus x1, which is 6. All right. Now, the first thing that we might want to do is, and we want to get this in standard form, which basically means we want the x over here and the y over there. We also probably want to get rid of this denominator. But before we do that, let's take care of this. Okay, so we have y minus a negative 2. That's just like y plus 2. And that's going to be equal to 2 thirds x minus 6. Let's not forget the parentheses. So what you might want to do is get rid of the denominator of the 3, and we can do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3. If we do, this 3 will cancel the 3 down here, and then we can use the distributive property. We will have 3y plus 3 times 2, which is 6. That's going to be equal to 2x minus 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay, now we want to get x over here and this constant over here. So to get the x over there, we can subtract both sides by 2, 2x. And if we do, we will have negative 2x plus 3y plus 6 is equal to negative 12. Now we can subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. And if we do, well, that was a bad, but these will cancel. And then we will have negative 2x plus 3y is equal, these will cancel, negative 12 minus 6, that was a minus 6, I took a little line through it, is going to be equal to negative 18. And there you go. This is standard form. Okay. And I believe this should be our last example uh, for, this, no, this, yeah, for, for this homework set. And here it is. Okay, consider the line that passes through these two points. First question is, find the slope of the line. Okay, well, that is basically nothing more than using the slope formula. That's y is equal to, no, m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We can call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So we are going to have 3 minus negative 3 divided by 4 minus 2. All right, well, once again, 3 minus negative 3 is just like 3 plus 3. And then we have 4 minus 2, which is 2. That will give us 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. And this brings us to part B. To find the standard form of the equation of the line, I'm going to use the point-slope form. And even though it says y1, x1, I can use any point I want. As a matter of fact, for this particular problem, I'm going to use this point right here. So I will have y minus y1, which is, in this case is going to be 3. It's going to be equal to our slope, which is 3, times the quantity x minus x1, which is 4. Okay, I can, do, I can simplify here, and that will give me y minus 3 is equal to 3x minus 12. Okay, now to get in standard form, I want to get x on this side and the um, numbers without variables on this side. 
So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And if I do, I'm going to have negative 3x plus y minus 3 is equal to negative 12. Let me write that, rewrite that up here. Negative 3x plus y minus 3 is equal to negative 12. I can now add 3 to both sides, plus 3, plus 3. And why am I doing that? Because these will cancel. And then I'm going to be left with negative 3x plus y. And that's going to be equal to negative 12 plus 3 or negative 9. And that right there is in standard form. Okay, next is to solve, is to find the slope intercept uh, form of this particular line. Okay, now I can start from here, okay, or I could start from the point slope form. And let's go ahead and start from the point slope form just for, just for kicks. So here we have y minus y sub 1, which is 3, is equal to 3 times the quantity x minus 4. I can go ahead and use the distributive property and simplify to get rid of these grouping symbols. And that will get me that y minus 3 is equal to 3x minus 12. Now remember, in the slope intercept form, all we need to do is solve for y. All right. So to solve for y, I just have to get y by itself. And the only the only other thing here is the neg is the minus 3. And I can get rid of that by adding 3 to both sides of the equation. All right, once I've done that, these cancel. I will have y is equal to 3x minus 12 plus 3 is minus 9. And there you go. And the last slide that I have for this is basically a sum of all the equations for the lines. And I'm sorry, this should be a capital B, not a lowercase b. I don't know what I was thinking. Capital B, OK? ax x plus by is equal to c. Once again, this is a standard form. And this right here is the most, is the most intuitive because uh, it gives you an idea of what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. Now, if you have a slope and a point, you can use the slope point-slope form to come up with a line. And if you have two points, you can still do it because you can use those two points to compute the slope. And then you're off to the races. And then once again, a horizontal line um, that goes through the that goes through a point a comma b is going to be y is equal to the y value b, and we'll have a slope of zero. And the vertical line is always going to be x is equal to a, the x value of that point, and that slope will always be undefined. And that concludes this video for the first part of section two. Stay tuned. Be on the lookout for the next video, which will cover the application problems that you will need to deal with for this particular section. And with that, this is Bob Boyle, signing off.